Hi everybody, Dr. Tanya Clark with Outpatient Mobile Solutions and today I'm going to be talking about a uh, kind of music that you can use to work with your clients and if you are a client yourself and you're trying to find something different for you to do at home as part of your exercise or activity program, this might be something for you. Um, so today I've got my guitar here and I am a novice so I'm not going to do anything crazy um, but we are going to use this guitar as a tool to do some very occupational therapy based activities. So with occupational therapy, we're working specifically today on using the fingers for a coordination exercise. So I have had several clients in the past whom I've used the guitar specifically um, for allowing them to practice getting back to playing the guitar. So I have worked successfully with musicians and uh, been able to have them bring their guitar itself into the clinic and of course with our therapy services we would come to you so then you'd have your whole setup and we could be able to incorporate your instruments and your equipment right into your therapy session but so getting back to the fun stuff some of the activities that I've been having people do with a guitar um, are a little varied so depending on the individual's deficits and what you're focusing on it might vary so first I would want to make sure that the individual is comfortable sitting with their guitar and has a comfortable uh, position that they're holding it. Um, they also want to have a hand underneath of the neck and then they're going to have another hand over here or another arm over here. So I'm sitting so it's a little bit different. Uh, this guitar does not have a neck strap so it's going to be different if they do or do not have that. Um, and of course, I'm trying to make sure that you can see all the different parts of the guitar, at least that we're going to be using today. So my position might be more different than if you were actually performing. So uh, the other thing is they may or may not choose to use a pick. So um, some people are more, uh, they'll use their, their fingertips as they're learning or they'll use their fingernails. I find that especially for the fine motor and dexterity challenge, I try to use a pick. Um, because not only is that going to give you something that you'll more practically use in the future if you are continuing to use the guitar and play the guitar, um, but it also gives that extra fine motor challenge of being able to hold on to the pick. So that's challenge number one. Challenge number two is I will typically have individuals try to pluck each line or each string one at a time. And so if they're a brand new to the guitar or if they're just starting out or if they're just starting back to the guitar after a period of time or after a deficit has occurred, um, this might be an appropriate way of getting them comfortable again. Sometimes when you give somebody the opportunity to do something, they start to flourish more because they are engaged. In occupational therapy, we term this as flow. So um, anybody who's talked to me in the past, I, I, I am a uh, big proponent of finding that flow moment. Um, so being able to facilitate that is really, really uh, rewarding as a therapist. But anyway, back to this. So I'll have them do each one at a time. And if they're able to, I'll have them do it without their vision. And by doing that, they are feeling the pressure and they're feeling their uh, finger moving down the strings with the pick. Okay, so they're going from the top to the bottom of the guitar is what I'm referring to. Um, so the next piece is the opposite hand is going to be up here, but you can see in the camera. Um, the other hand is typically up here. So something that is really unique to the guitar, anybody who's seen somebody play the guitar, the hand that's up on the neck of the guitar, uh, this hand is responsible for pressing down on each string for certain chords it's a certain pattern um, but so if you have a certain position then you can play a chord um, so if you've got the ability to press down with the various fingers then you can make this really beautiful sound versus just with nothing having that really open sound which is still beautiful um, but going back to pressing so if you have somebody who's working on the guitar what I recommend is something that I found on YouTube when I was trying to find something for a client that's called spider walking and let me make sure that this is in a good spot for you guys to see and the idea is one string at a time you're going to go in between the frets and you're going to 
press down, or the flange is going to press down, so that, pardon me, so that then you can hear that. So if I do that note without anything, it's a different sound, and all I'm doing is I'm pressing, okay? So here's the biofeedback that I love talking about. So not only am I hearing that I've done something different, right? You can even take your finger off and hear the difference. Uh, but you can also hear if somebody hasn't pressed down enough. So if I'm not uh, strong in my hand up here and I'm just, just doing a little bit, it doesn't really sound like anything. It sounds very dead. Um, there's, there's no tone to it. There's no sound coming out from music. So what you want to do is try to push harder and then you'll be able to hear that sound. Oh, and then I'm doing the wrong thing. Oh, I was on the fret. I did say I'm still learning, so there's that. Um, so what you would do is for spider walking, you do between each fret with each finger, okay? And I am going to look because I'm still learning, so we're gonna go four times between each. So one, one, two, three, four, and then you're going to move to the next chunk. So in between the next two frets, okay? And the same thing. Okay, and we start slow and then we progressively get faster. Okay? So the idea is as you develop the strength in your fingers and in the finger pads, uh, you're going to be able to go more smoothly and more quickly. So you would be able to go from, am I doing the right one? Yep, right there. So then you would be able to hopefully do one, two, three, Four, okay, and that's a great exercise that I found again on YouTube. Somebody else came up with it. I did not, um, but it's a great way of not only uh, figuring out how your hands move along the guitar, but it also helps you to um, have a really non-chord way of building up your hand strength, coordination, pressure, and coordination. So the spider walking, you would do one uh, one uh, string at a time. And so ideally you would go from one and then you go up to the next and you would do the same thing. So then you would do just that one string four times and then you would go four times, four times, four times along the whole string and, uh, excuse me, along each string. Okay. So then you would do each of the strings, one, two, three, four, five, six, doing that one, two, three, four method. And the idea is you would do one at a time, four times first. One at a time, four times first, you're going all the way through. And then once you got to the very top, if you felt like you could still feel your fingers because it's going to start hurting if you're brand new at it or if you're trying to get back into it, then you can go back to the bottom or, or go back down even. Um, but what you would do is you would then try doing maybe three times or two times or once. And then you would still go up strings. So that way then you can not only uh, develop that movement, and help with your speed and your accuracy, but you're also, again, going to get that feedback. Now, um, one thing that a lot of people enjoy doing is getting the chords going, and the same rule applies if you don't have enough pressure, kind of like when I was pushing right on that fret and it did not sound like what I wanted. Um, there it is. Um, when you have that sound, or if you're just so, so lightly that it's just kind of a, and there's no sound reverberating inside of the guitar. And this is an acoustic guitar. It will be different with an electric guitar. Um, but so if you are trying to help your client to play a chord or practice a chord or get back into chords and you hear that sound, you know to cue them to push harder. And you can even break it down between the different fingers. So say I'm playing, I'm playing the G chord and say I'm not pressing very hard. I'm just lightly over it. And... So it sounds okay, but if I push down, so then you can hear a little bit of a difference and you can even go for uh, line by line, excuse me. So this is without me pushing down, okay, and then the bottom. So that doesn't give you a lot of sound. So again, dead, dead, and that's what it should sound like if I'm not pressing on it, okay? And then the hit. Um, and then if I do push down, again, now it's got a sound. That one has a sound. 
and that one has a reverberating sound. So then put it all together, and then it sounds nice. Um, so that way then you know what to do to cue your clients to um, facilitate their success. So I hope that this has been helpful. Um, I know that I'm going to continue to practice my guitar skills, and maybe this has even inspired some of you to uh, pull out that guitar in your closet and try playing it and you know, try some spider walking or plucking or whatever it might be. But at least you have some new tools in your toolbox so that you can give your client something fun, different, and um, help allow them, hopefully, to experience flow. So I hope everybody has enjoyed this. I know that I have. I appreciate you guys being here with me, and have a great night.